Well, we have some time left today, and we want to take some of the questions that you've sent in via email and bring it on. Pat, this first one comes from Joanne, who says, A lady from my church is expecting a baby, and her Christian boyfriend lives with her. Everyone, including the pastor, acts like everything is cool. Her 10-year-old daughter, who was born out of wedlock with a different father, is in my kid's church class, and I just wonder what she thinks about her mom's current, quote, situation. I know she knows it's wrong. What kind of message is it sending to her? No one will address the situation on the pastoral staff. Is it okay for someone else to address this? Well, I think definitely. You know, the old days, uh, you know, the Hawthorne, the Scarlet Letter, you know, the lady who was branded, she had sex outside of marriage, and they put a scarlet A, you know, on her. Uh, so it was the fallen woman and all this kind of thing. Uh, I think, you know, to love somebody like this is, is fine, but the truth is she's sleeping around whether you like it or not, and she's having more than one child out of wedlock, and that is not a cool situation. And somebody needs to go to her and lead her to the Lord and say, look, you've got to clean up your act. We, we're not judging you. We're not trying to condemn you. God loves you and all that sort of thing. But nevertheless, you can't keep having these babies. If you love this guy you're living with, then by all means get married to him, but we, we'll, we'll facilitate that. But somebody's got to help her. Somebody has got to counsel with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want, you know, it seems like that would need to come from someone in a position. Well, the pastors, the that's what yeah. he gets paid for, for heaven's sakes. I can't understand that. All right. Okay, this is Sonia who says, there is a person that goes to my church who's always asking for rides. They never ask if they can help with gas, and they never say thank you when someone helps them. This person quit their job on a crazy whim, and then they say God told them to quit, and now they're unemployed. This person makes me angry. I think they're taking advantage of people, but I'd also never want to deny someone going to church. What's the best way to respond? in this situation. You know, the Bible says if anybody uh, won't work, let him not eat. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of tough. The Bible uh, isn't a feel-good, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, repository for deadbeats. And I, I think there's some of these so-called gospel bums who, oh, God told me to go off and, you know, quit my job, and then I'm going to live off you. Uh, but, you know, Taking somebody to church, what's such a big deal about that? You got an empty place in your car, so. You're going anyway, right? You're going anyway, yeah. It's not exactly an imposition, yeah. all right? Okay, this is Tina who says, my life has been such a mess. I work so hard and so many things stand in my way. Why can't things get better? I do not live like a saint, but I treat others with kindness. Well, look, you know, the Bible says, and this is, you know, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. I want to say it again. A man will eat good by the fruit of his lips. You must speak the truth of what you're going to see. You, that this positive mental attitude is not just uh, mind over matter. It's the real deal. And you have to believe that what you're going to have is success. And you need to act it out that you're going to be successful and have success and that what you touch and what you do is going to be blessed. That's, you, so you're confessing what God himself has already said. So I recommend that you get into the Bible, into the Word of God. You learn it and let it be in your heart and then speak forth what it says. Instead of speaking negatively, why can't I succeed? Why is everything against me? Why does the world hate me? All that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pull out of that funk and begin to, you know, declare victory. Okay, this is Elizabeth who says, if it was God himself who came down to earth, why does the Bible claim many times that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who eventually died for us? Which one came down to earth and died on the cross? Well, the son of God is God himself. I mean, there, there's a trinity, but uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in a sense, God sent his only son uh, and he is the Son of God, but at the same time, he is very God and very man. So um, that's, it's perhaps a little confusing, but that's the way it worked.